Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is turbos and superchargers. Superchargers are devices that deliver more air to the engine. Generally, a supercharger that uses the energy from exhaust gases is called a turbocharger, and a supercharger that is driven by an engine is called a supercharger. So, this video will follow this convention. A supercharger is rotated via a belt connected to the crankshaft, and it delivers air to the engine. It can be effective at low engine speed. On other hand, it can become a heavy load at high engine speed and may no longer contribute to increased output. Therefore, during high engine speed, the operation of the supercharger is halted by turning off the electromagnetic clutch on the pulley. In automobiles, two main types are primarily used, the roots blower and the lism compressor. The roots blower type delivers air without compressing it inside the supercharger. So, it is just a blower as the name suggests. On the other hand, the lism compressor type is capable of expelling compressed air because it narrows the volume between the rotor vanes as it rotates, making it known for its high efficiency. Until the 1990s, the roots blower type had been predominantly used, but since Mazda adopted the lism compressor type in 1993, the lism compressor type has been widely adopted. However, with the current advancements in turbocharger performance, there are not many vehicle models that utilize superchargers. A turbocharger is a system that utilizes exhaust gases from the engine to rotate a turbine wheel, which in turn drives a compressor wheel on the same axis to force air into the engine. Compressed air becomes heated, causing a decrease in the oxygen molecule content within the air, leading to a reduction in output. To prevent this, an intercooler is installed between the compressor and the engine to lower the temperature of the compressed air. Intercoolers come in two types, the air-to-air -air intercooler, which uses the airflow during driving to cool compressed air, and the air-to-liquid intercooler, which relies on engine coolant for cooling. Turbochargers have a significant antinomy. If a small turbocharger is installed on an engine, it can rotate the turbine even with a small amount of exhaust gas at low engine speeds, allowing for compression of the intake air. However, when the engine speed increases and the exhaust gas volume rises, the turbine will overspeed and may be damaged. On the other hand, when a large turbocharger is installed, it can efficiently compress intake air at high engine speeds. However, at low engine speeds, there may not be enough exhaust gas volume for the turbine to rotate adequately. Due to the turbocharger not operating effectively at low engine speeds, the engine produces sluggish acceleration even when the accelerator pedal is depressed. The phenomenon is referred to as turbo lag. It can be said that the development of turbocharger technology thus far has been aimed at overcoming this turbo lag. Small turbochargers are particularly susceptible to over revving and damage when exposed to an excessive influx of exhaust gases. To prevent this, a wastegate is installed. When the engine speed increases and the boost pressure reaches a certain level, and the boost pressure exceeds the spring force within the wastegate actuator, it opens the valve to allow exhaust gases to bypass the turbine through a passage. Because adoption of a wastegate restricts the maximum boost pressure, it allows for the use of small turbochargers and enables supercharging even at low to mid-range engine speeds. Twin turbo utilizes two small turbos instead of a large one turbo. Compared to a large turbo, a small turbo has lower inertia moments of the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel, which allows for a reduction in turbo lag. Additionally, by appropriately connecting the exhaust pipes, it is possible to prevent interference from exhaust gases from each cylinder, thereby accelerating the spool-up of the turbine wheel and reducing turbo lag. The world's first twin turbocharged car was the Maserati B Turbo, which was unveiled in 1981. Twin scroll turbo divides the inlet of the turbine housing into two, preventing exhaust gas interference and improving turbo lag. It was adopted in four-cylinder engines and rotary engines. Sequential turbocharging utilizes two turbos, which are switched based on the engine speed. 
In a series sequential turbocharger system, a small turbo with lower inertia moments is employed during low engine speeds to reduce turbo lag. At high engine speeds, the small turbo is bypassed, and the large turbo generates high boost pressure. The world's first car to feature sequential twin turbochargers was the Porsche 959, which was manufactured from 1986 to 1996. A parallel sequential turbocharger system connects two small turbos in parallel. At low engine speeds, the exhaust gases are directed to one turbo to reduce turbo lag. At high engine speeds, both turbos are engaged to generate high boost pressure. A variable geometry turbo achieves a balance between high boost pressure at high engine speeds and reducing turbo lag at low engine speeds by altering the exhaust gas flow path by the vanes in the turbine housing. At high engine speeds, the flow path is widened, creating minimal resistance to allow exhaust gases to smoothly impact the turbine wheel. At low engine speeds, the flow path is narrowed to increase the velocity of exhaust gases, thereby maintaining the turbine wheel rotational speed. In recent years, car manufacturers have been combining turbos of different sizes and variable geometry turbos in various ways. For example, the BMW N57S diesel engine employs a triple turbo setup, using two variable geometry turbos in one large turbo. In the past, there were models that combined a supercharger and a turbocharger, such as the Volkswagen 1.4-liter TSI engine and the Nissan MA09ERT engine. An electric turbocharger is a system that uses an electric motor to rotate a compressor wheel and force air into the engine. While it doesn't utilize exhaust gas energy, it is not a turbocharger in the strict sense. However, because of its shape, it is commonly referred to as an electric turbocharger. At low engine speeds that have low exhaust gas flow, the electric turbocharger produces boost pressure to reduce turbo lag. At high engine speeds, where there is a sufficient amount of exhaust gas flow, the electric turbocharger is bypassed, and the normal turbocharger provides the boost. The conventional turbochargers were devices designed to increase output. However, the target of current downsized turbo engines is fuel efficiency and higher torque at engine low speed. For this purpose, downsized turbo engines adopt an electric wastegate instead of a mechanically operated wastegate driven by exhaust gas pressure. In constant speed driving, the wastegate keeps open and turbocharging is minimized. In conventional turbo engines, the engine compression ratio was lowered to around 8 to 9 in order to increase boost pressure. However, for example, Volkswagen's TSI 2-liter turbo engine compression ratio is 12.2, equivalent to a naturally aspirated engine, allowing for efficient operation even in non-boost range. When the driver depresses the accelerator pedal, the wastegate is closed and the turbo is activated, and generates the necessary engine torque. At this time, turbo lag occurs. However, downsized turbo engines employ a small turbocharger. In addition, automatic transmission downshifting promptly to increase engine speed reduces turbo lag. Furthermore, when the accelerator pedal is released once the turbo has been activated, the electric throttle valve system continues to open the throttle valve, thus the engine works as an air pump, to keep air flowing in order to prevent decrease in turbine rotation. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.